time now uh, to bring you the word of the Lord because that is the business that has made me to come to the pulpit and nothing else. And I want just to move straight to that business. Today, I will be capturing a message from only one verse. But I will read a text. I will read a text that is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 10 to 19. And then uh, I will single the verse, and then after that, I will be sharing the message to you. So I'm reading from the Bible, that is the New Living. If you have your Bible, you can open in the book or in the letter, according to uh, uh, Paul, that is uh, in the, in, in, in the uh, you know, Philippine. That is uh, the book entitled Philip or Philippi. Now, I wish to start reading. It is called Paul's Thanks for the Gifts. Paul's Thanks for the Gifts. So verse 10 says, How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Verse 14. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you uh, the good news. And uh, then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Verse 16. Even when I was in the Salonica, you send help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward for your kindness. At the moment, I have all I need. And more, I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They, uh, they are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable, pleasing to God. Verse 19, and my verse for the day. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Just to avoid isolating Verse 20, let me just read it because it's the conclusion of that section. Now, all glory to God, our Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, it's amazing when we read some of these texts and they touch us a lot. And I want to thank you because, Lord, you don't gather us for naught. You don't gather us for nothing. But, Lord, I want to thank you that you are able to work with us. As I encourage your people, your servants, I pray the Lord, things are not going to be the same again because you are going to take us to another level as it, uh, Heavenly Father, uh, you know, uh, surrounds matters of your doing. So I pray that, Lord, you encourage, rekindle the fire in us of trusting you the more. In Jesus' name, we pray and we all say amen and amen. Thank you very much. I want now to single my verse, and that is verse 19. Verse 19. That is Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Is the verse of my message of the day. And the verse says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And in the text we read, that is in the Living Bible, it says, And this same God, who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Thank you very much. Now, my topic for the day is trusting God for our supplies. 
trusting God for our supplies. And my theme for the day is our spiritual orders are ready now. We are trusting God for our supply. Our spiritual orders are ready now. We are trusting God for our supplies. And I have, uh, today I'm dealing with a three point sermon, and I want to give my three points. Point number one is uh, that, uh, you know, our order is ready. So, this point number one is orders done through prayers. Orders done through prayers. Don't worry about that because soon I'll be unpacking uh, the, the, the issue to you so that you understand better. Number two, these are orders concerning our needs. And last point is orders done to a rich God. Can you clap to Jesus? The orders are done to a rich God. And I want just to bring to you or the point that uh, it is just amazing that uh, the man of God, Paul, is bringing a marketing, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, if somebody is in this all today and has done marketing and supplies, I think it's in the right timing now. Because Paul is talking in a context of business, a context of marketing, a context of somebody being sent to go and supply goods. If you are sent to go and supply goods, you supply goods to different customers, to different people, but the people that you are supplying to are supposed to be the people who have come to the supermarket, who have come to the wholesaler, and they have made their orders. Let me just give an example. I think uh, Tyrus will understand this better because he has worked with my friends, the Malays. The Malays, you know, if you are in those rural places, you'll see some time, uh, you know, uh, lorries, canters, written, mulays. And they are moving all over from different, one shop to another, one shop to another. But what they are doing, they are going around supplying the goods that are needed in those shops. Because after some time, they will be released to the people at a price as, you know, people will start coming and buying. When I followed one friend of mine who was working with the Malaysia driver, I realized the man is carrying a book, a big book. And that book has a record of uh, the, the places he's supposed to be delivering the orders. So the people from that uh, market, people from the owner of that uh, shop went to the shop, made an order na kandika kasema nataka uh, ungangano bando tano nataka mafuta nataka sweets nataka hi imeandikwa the list and the orders are well written but this guy cannot make a, a, a kind of uh, a, a confusion because wherever he goes he goes and supplies oh can you say supply he goes and supplies the goods according to the orders and uh one thing that I followed keenly and realized, I was asking myself, why is he moving very fast? And things are supplied, and he continues. He goes to another shop, he supplies, and the orders are different. The orders are different. So I realized, before he starts leaving, uh, you know, the wholesale, the supermarket center where they are selling the things to be uh, given in orders. He makes sure that he knows where the towns are. He knows if he's starting from Machakos and he will go all the way to Kadiani. He knows that he will begin with uh, uh, some shops there at Anza Uko Charete. And then he will move to Tumba, he will move to Katebe, he will move to Mutituni, after Mutituni, Kaloleni, and you go to, you know, uh, Kwangila, you go to Keno, you go to Mitaboni, you go, you know, he knows the chronology of the towns that will be supplying the goods. So, the goods are organized and arranged in the lorry from Ile Atafika ya Kwanza na Ile Amwishu Inaweko to Amwishu. So, akifika hapa hii, hii ya hapa charity ni karibu, iko tu karibu anatoa. Ikifika motichuni, anatoa raka. So, he knows how he's going to do the supplies. And I want to tell you that uh, I am so excited about the context of the message here. 
The man of God, Paul, had received uh, several times supplies, supplies, you know, of uh, its needs, of what he wants from this church of Philippi. And he continued to receive from the church of Philippi. And he continued to receive, by the way, he even says categorically in this text that uh, you guys from Philippi, by the time I'm, I, I was in Thessalonica, you were not actually selfish. You could even send, uh, you know, supplies there so that I can continue doing the work of the Lord. But one good thing that I like about Paul, this text, somebody said, has really been misused by people. This text is not about that God is going to make us wealthy. God is going to supply our needs according to his riches and glory to make us wealthy. This section is talking about a God who has our supplies. You will not get supplies from Lace if you did not go there and make the orders. So you not just sit comfortably and expect the supplies to be done. So Paul is telling them, when you've been uh, trying to send goods to me and supplies to me, you've been making orders. And let me tell you, this is very sweet. Oh, this is very sweet. Because Paul, in his preamble, when he was speaking uh, in the earlier verses, verse 10, verse 11, verse 12, verse 13, as he was going down, you know, I was learning a lot. I was just feeling good. Because he tells them, I'm not doing this because actually at this time I'm in need. And actually, you know, they say, if you make a world in a war, the war will give you an echo. So when Paul is making the world, it's not that I need something from you. The echo is, these guys were doing it even when he was not asking them. So they were doing it according to the orders that they were making from God. And God was also sending Paul's order to them. And Paul is telling them, please, please, my dear friends, I don't want you to make mistakes. I don't want you to miss the focus such that you'll change the focus from God to me. I'm not the person that I send you. I'm not supposed to come and maybe bother a lot doing what I'm doing, telling you thank you from verse 10. Actually, this is done to God. And I want to tell you that uh, the order you made to God, the order you made to God is ready. And God is ready to supply it. And that's why he tells them, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm saying in my, my first point, orders done through prayer. And this should now tickle your ears. Most of the time, we make our orders when we are praying to God. We tell God, oh, Heavenly Father, you know, I'm trusting in you. I am fi uh, finding it challenging. I need this and this and this. And during that time, our trust in God's supply is being registered to God so that he can supply. But I wanted to make an addition to you that uh, when you are making your order in, 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 in prayer, we make prayers in our Sunday service. We make prayers in our home cells. We make our prayers in our caches. We make our prayers in crusade. We make our prayers in midweek prayers like today. And when we are making the prayers, God is listening. But uh, in addition to the prayers, there are some times when we just serve God. Because we love God and we have prayed for energy so that we can serve him. When we are serving, serving him, God just watches and decides to receive our orders. When we are giving, you know, to his ministry, when we are giving to his servants like Paul, this coming Sunday, we will be giving, giving to us the needy in our ASU moja. And I've seen uh, the, the Reverend Iluve is also capturing that in our morning devotions. Let me tell you, when you are giving to us those people, you are making your orders before God. And soon, the Lord from heaven, I don't know whether it will be written, heaven supplies, it will land to your place. And God is going to supply, you know, your needs. He's going to meet your needs according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. And so I want to say, I have good news for you. That whenever you are doing the work of the Lord, whenever you are presenting your need to God, continue trusting, continue trusting, continue trusting God for your supplies, and God will never fail you.
He has never failed me. I know you will not fail you. He has never failed those who are before us. He is not going to fail you. He did not fail the children of Israel when they were in the midst, you know, of uh, people who are punishing them, the, the Egyptians. They continued and God did not fail them. My second point. These are, you know, supplies that are going to be done because are of orders concerning our needs. What are our needs? You know, Paul begins by telling these people, I have learned to live by nothing. Hata nikiwa sinachakula, nitaishi. Hata nikiwa kwa shida, nitaishi. Hata nikiwa na nyingi, nitaishi. And I was trying to imagine, some of us here seated who agree with the Reverend Moki, even those who are back at home who agree with the Reverend Moki, there are some times when you can say, I am in my lowest level. There are some times when you are just from the lower of the lower. The person is asking you for rent. It's just on the door. Maybe you have some arrears of your rent. You are in the house and even the children are looking upon you for food, for a meal. And you have nothing in your pocket. And the fridge is empty. Your cupboard is empty. Your wall unit has nothing. But you tell, you just sit there trusting this great God who is supposed to supply for your needs. But I am saying this. We have also gone to our highest level. Whereby you can remember. Unaesa kumbuka kuna siku ulikuwa umeketi unaralua kukufrai. Najua kani mwenda unairalua na unakula pengine na chapati na mochele na vile ulikuwa nakula. You can remember when you had a long course of, 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 of breakfast. When you had a long course of uh, a dinner or even a lunch. And you can say iyo siku nilikuwa juu. So like Paul is saying, ni mejua, najua kukua na plenty. I know to have plenty and I know, you know, kutokuwa nayo. Sometimes you have a lot of clothes to change. You can even afford to change twice in a day. But kuna tokea moto unachoma, unakuwa hauna. Na unanza kuzoea kuvaa nguo moja, you know, in one week. Unazoea kuvaa, you know, kiatu moja in a week. Because that time has come. Na ndiyo Paul anasema, mimi ni mezoea. Kuwa navyo na kutokuwa navyo. Ni mezoea kutembea katika tumbo lisilo na kitu. Ni mezoea and ni mezoea. And that is what he's saying. And he says our God is going to supply to our needs. He is going to supply for our needs. And one thing I've realized, one of our needs I said is food. Employment made you are wondering where am I going to get some employment? Good health, salvation. You know, even maybe for, for even if it's salvation, it's not for you, for your brother who has never given his life to Jesus, for your sister who has never given his life to Jesus, for your nephew who has never given his life to Jesus, and you have been going sleepless nights so that one day you'll see that nephew of yours uh, giving his life to Jesus. Because Baba Nashi Vibaya, Anna Kunya Pombe, Anna Fanya Mambo. But you pray that God will supply for that particular need because the order is about or rather concerning our needs. Now, when you think of uh, uh, provisions, the list can be very long. But I am saying our God is so sweet. He's so sweet. He's when we trust him, when we bless our oldest, he's going to do it. And, and I was trying to um, animate it in my mind and I tried to imagine can, can, can you just sit down and see, I gave an illustration of this other world that is to supply goods if even if you have many uh, cars or lorries or whatever it will take some time before you go to the other one and the next one it will take time but I was trying to imagine of this God of ours when we have a need God of the global people God of the guys who are in America. God of the believers in China. God of believers in France. God of believers in Germany. God of believers in Europe. God of believers down in Europe. God of believers in South Africa. is the same God. But let me tell you, the sweetness, the goodness of this God is that he is going to supply and meet our needs. Because this is concerning our needs. But when it becomes to the vehicle of doing it, God has many angels. So instead of using the lorries we are thinking about, you just sent angels. And in the tingling of an eye, they will, they will be leaving heaven going all over. That is one thing. Our God might not need even those angels. 
He will just cause things happen because he's a great God. I think our, our, our computers, our mobile phones are helping us these days to understand our God. If you want to get to something, you just click a button and things happen. God can just set your whatever, your app, which is in heaven. heaven. He just touches your app, it comes. What are your needs? He just clicks down. Yeah? If it is just searching in Nikitugani, you are now going to switch search. Inaenda inakupata hapa anapata ah this is Mary. What is Mary saying? Ana search anajua what what are the orders? And the next time ana anaonyesha tu iweze kuwa prepared, inakuwa prepared and then anasema send inatuma mara moja. I don't know whether you have seen that uh, effectiveness of doing things in uh, in the present world, the digital world, whereby unatuma message na maybe I don't know whether you have tried this like me. I have my phone here, I send and the other phone is here the other number, unasikia, mara moja umetuma, the moment you have just said send, in a tingling of two seconds, unasikia inaanguka pande ingine. That is how our God works. He will supply to our needs. Because he, he, that, that, that is what he, he is. And now, before I take much time, because I can feel, I, I, I want to move to the last point, because it's what I'm already starting to develop, is that in point number three, the order is done to a rich God. This God is rich. Wakati unaomba Mungu usiogope kumuitisha kitu kwa sababu ana kila kitu. Kila kitu ni yake. Kwa nini tunateseka? And then uh, you know I was just admiring that uh, our God has everything we need. And Matthew chapter 6 verse 26 tries to give us an illustration of birds. If we feed the birds of the air and they don't go without food any one day. How about us? And he says in that verse 26, the, the bird of the air, they do not sow. The bird of the air, they do not reap. The birds of the air do not have stalls or buns. But let me tell you, kila wakati wanakula vitu fresh. Wakati wanakula za fridge, wanakula fresh. Because the Lord takes care of these birds. The Lord takes care of these birds. Which means if we can release ourselves in the hands of the Lord, the Lord will do want us. And that's why Paul was telling these guys in the church of Philippi, this God that you are trusting, this God that is sending you to bring orders to me, this God that has been taking care of me in a mysterious way, is going to supply your needs according to his riches in glory. And Psalm 24, verse 1, is telling us that the earth belongs to God. And even the uh, inhabitants of the world belongs to God. This one I must read. Psalm 95. Let me read Psalm 95. Let me see whether I can get there on a good time. Psalm 95. Just go there. We read together with you. I will be reading two verses. And it says, verse 95, uh, chapter 95, verse 4. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Oh, glory to God. Can you imagine of this? The heaven and earth belongs to the Lord. The seas, the oceans belongs to the Lord. The big mountains we see belongs to the Lord. You know, he's not proud about it. Because that is what he is. Yeah, koivo. Wakati watu anakimbizana mutu apate plotitano. Can you imagine? Mutu anaraka apate plotitano. Mbaga anagrab, anafanya hivi. Mungu wetu, he owns everything. My daddy, God, owns everything. And if my daddy owns all that, it belongs to me. That's why he will supply all my needs. I am his child. I am his daughter. And I need to tell God, I need this. I press my order. When I press my order, God is going to meet that order. And when he meets that order, he will supply all my needs according to his riches. I was, uh, you know, maybe somebody can help me by reading First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. First Samuel. I know Guys, you are digital, you have your phone, you can go there very fast. 
and they read it for me. If you don't uh, get there faster, I will get up there and I will read it for you. First Samuel 2, verse 8. I, I say these verses, I need to hear them read so that you can also hear them. Chapter 2, verse 8. Somebody is there to read for me? Chapter 2, verse 8. I'm repeating so that you can hear. Even those who are back at home to hear, that is chapter 2, verse 8. This is in the category of uh, Anna. You remember Anna was crying in the temple? She was praying. Let's hear what she said. I, you are about to start. It says, He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the trash heap. He seats them with noble men and gives them a throne of honor. For the foundation of the earth of the Lord is, he has set the world on them. You hear that? That is so powerful. Let me just read it again to you. There is a power in the reputation. The Bible is saying, he lifts the poor from the dust. And the needy from the garbage dump. Oh my goodness, this is powerful. He sets them among princes, placing them in seats of honor. For all the earth is the Lord's, and he has set the world in order. Oh, hallelujah. Yani mungu ya mepangisha kila kitu katika dunia kwa mpango wake, kwa sababu ni yake, na kuna mtu anaheza kumuliza, kwa nini uliweka hiyo Mount, you know, Komarok on that side, na ukaweka Badeas this side, kwa nini azikuenda huko, he has planned, he has set the world the way he wants. And he decided, wacha wa Amerikani wakaya huko, wa nakulu wa nabaridi huko. Wacha Afrika kukaya wa Afrika huko, wa wanapata the equatorial temperatures, na wanapata joto. Ameipanga kulingana na vile alipenda. But the sweet thing about it is, we are trusting, we are making orders to a rich God. A rich God to a point that this God is not limited to lifting you to a higher level. He can take you from where you are now, from the level you are now, God can take you to another level. Mungu anaweza kukuinua watu wakikuangalia wanaona uko chini, anakuweka kwa MCA, anakuweka maramoja kwa senator, anakuweka mpaka hata president. That is the God we worship. Ni Mungu ambaye anaweza kubandilisha account yako, ambaye inakaanga kila wakati iko negative, anaiweka inakuwa na kitu inakuwa na 10,000. He is a God who can make that account accommodate a million. That is the God I'm preaching. Is a God who can bring to your reality. Umekuwa na shida, au na hii na hii, anaweka, unakuwa na hata na boma iko na ngombe. Anaweka boma ya kuku. Anakuwekea kile ambacho wewe mwenyewe unaitaji. He will supply your needs. Wakati tunakuja mbele za bwana, I don't know what has made you to come to this prayer fellowship today. And I've always been telling you, when you come to this prayer fellowship, don't come like a team, come like individual. Be, come before God. Tell God what you want. Present your needs before God. Approach this God who is your father in heaven. And I'm telling you, you'll never be the same again. So irrespective of what you are bringing before God, our God is going to supply all your needs. Are calling to his riches in glory. Can you clap to Jesus? I know our God is powerful. I've just been admiring the knowledge of humanity, where he's going. Mimi Ata Sielewi, Juzi, you know, last uh, Saturday. I was so amazed. I was just reading an illustration and I learned that. Uh, can you imagine somebody training a dog? And the dog is supposed to go to the shop and unue nyama na unue nyama na alipe na alete nyama kwa nyumba. Ikiwa inakata kata. A dog. And then one butcher ambaye anashanga. How come uyu njama anatuma umbu akuje kununue nyama kwangu? How come kuna umbu amwerefu kama uyu? Until, you know, when you are told I need meat. Now maybe the person has not even specified you wonder, nitapea hui umbwa eh, nyama ya inagani. Ni matumbo, ni liver, ni inagani. And then, he just raises a liver, anamuonyesha umbwa, umbwa anafanya kichwa hivi. Anamuonyesha nyama hile ingina, anapiga kichwa hivi. Anashanga, what kind of a dog is this? And the man decides to follow the dog. Mbaka pali, inapeleka nyama kwa nyumba. Now, dog inaenda inafungua gate, inapanda grofa ya kwanza. 
inaenda ya pili kwa stairs ikiwa na mali yake inapeleka kufika kwa murango ina scratch scratch na mwenye nyumba anafungua mwenye nyumba ana make the butch ambaye alikuwa amefuata ajue kitu kingine ambayo hakujua that this dog is supposed to know more than what he thought because the owner has trained the dog to a point of anaenda pia anaufungua wa gate na anaufungua kwenda kufungua kwa mlango nobody is supposed to open for the dog anaenda anachukua funguo anafungua na anaingia kwa nyumba but i know the problem is uh, some of us as i said in the previous time i was preaching our psychology about key ni kitu ambao unaingiza kwa shimo alafu una roll uh, some keys they don't need that anaenda tu amebeba kati huyo umbwa na anafanya ana, ana kati tu ina swipe hapo na mlango unafunguka so he was so surprised i'm saying our god is going to supply Oh, ni, oh, our needs according to riches in glory. Hata ikiwa ni akili, atatupea akili ya kutafuta, atatupea akili ya kuishi pamoja, atatupea akili ya kulea watoto, atatupea akili hata ya kuishi katika hii dunia wakati kuna mambo mengi because he is a great God. So I want to conclude by saying that let's continue trusting supplies from God. Tuachane na supplies kutoka other direction. Let's take supplies from our God because he's a great God. And I've said we will never be ashamed if we trust in this God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I'm so excited as I'm sharing to your uh, you know servants here seated and others who are listening from home. Heavenly Father, I know you will supply our needs. Many times we have missed the mark because we press our holders to humanity instead of pressing our holder to you. Today we want to trust holders in you. And Heavenly Father, the things that we do, they are not for note. They esteem Heavenly Father, a data who went to, uh, uh, you know, your servant Apostle Paul with the supplies from the church of Philippi. He made Paul be very happy. And as he was writing here to make thanks because of the gifts, Heavenly Father, he told them, you have done well. I thank you for what you have done. But the good news I have for you is, I may not be able to supply to you. I might not be able to reciprocate what you have done to me. But my God, oh my goodness, the God that has been supplying to me will meet all your needs according to, your, to his riches in glory. Lord, I believe this is going to be done in our lives. We are taking this verse to be ours. We are taking this promise to be ours from today. And we want to be believing that you will meet all our, uh, you will supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because of revealing these great things to us. We, I want to take a moment, Lord, and commit the needs of, your, uh, of my listeners to you. Uh, they may not say it verbally, but Heavenly Father, you know everything. I want to pray that as they leave this sanctuary, things are going to start happening. Because, Lord, it is about you. It is about you meeting our orders, and it's not about us. So, Lord, may you do wonders in the life of your people, so that they'll be encouraged even to worship you and serve you the more. Thank you, Jesus. In your holy name, the name that is above all names, I pray and your people say, Amen, 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 Amen.